Hi, we have a quick science experiment for you today. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> flower rockets are just like water rockets, except they are powered by compressed air and dry flour instead of water. For this rocket, we're using about 800 grams of plain flour. It takes a little more effort to get it into the rocket because flour just doesn't flow as well. Here we're pressurizing the rocket to 120 psi. Three, two, one, go! Oh, wow. <laughs> the flour seems to be almost as effective as water when it comes to generating thrust. Uh, heads up! Heads up. Oh, come on. Wow, watch out. <laughs> the flour rockets are fun to fly. They do leave a bit of a mess. So how come the flour doesn't just compact down at the bottom of the rocket, but flows more like a liquid when you launch the rocket? Let's have a look at what's going on. When you pressurize flour, almost dry powders for that matter, the high pressure air fills in the tiny little gaps between the particles. The rate of diffusion depends on the size of the gaps between the particles. If you suddenly release the pressure in the bottle, the high pressure air between the particles starts to expand, pushing those particles further apart from each other. This is essentially aerating it, which is similar to the process of liquefaction and making the whole powder now act more as a fluid. These widely separated particles can then flow more easily out of the nozzle. Here is an experiment that shows this aeration in practice. We have a bottle half filled with flour. On top we have a nozzle with a quick release mechanism attached to a hose that goes off to an air supply. As we pressurize it to 100 psi, you can see the flour initially compact a little because of the pressure differential of higher pressure above the flour than there is in the gaps between the particles, but eventually all the pressure equalizes. First, let's have a look at the pressure release in real time. Three, two, one. And here it is again, slow down and close up. When you release the pressure, you can see how the flour instantly grows in volume with thousands of cavities expanding within it. The expansion in this example is enough to eject quite a bit of flour out of the nozzle even though it was sitting at the bottom of the bottle. Here is the experiment again from a slightly different angle. However, in a rocket, the nozzle is at the bottom of the bottle, just under the flour. When you pressurize the rocket through the nozzle, typically a crack will open up in the flour to allow the high pressure air to escape into the top of the bottle to pressurize it. But because of the rate of diffusion, the tiny gaps between the particles take a little longer to also become fully pressurized. When you finish pressurizing the bottle, all the pressure equalizes between the particles and the top of the bottle. The crack will usually collapse under gravity because the airflow is no longer keeping it open. When you release the pressure in the nozzle, the flour will experience the same aeration behavior near the nozzle that we saw in the previous experiment. The high pressure air between the particles forces the particles into the lower pressure area near the nozzle. The higher pressure above the flour helps force the flour down towards the nozzle. This continues until all the flour is ejected. So let's have a look at this experiment in real life. The experiment is set up is identical to the first, but this time the nozzle's on the bottom. And here it is in real time. Two, one. And now let's have a look at it in slow motion and close up again. Here you can see the crack open during pressurization to let the air to the top of the bottle. It is difficult to see the aerating flower section near the nozzle, but you can see how fast the flower is ejected out of the nozzle compared to how slow it is flowing towards it in the bottle. Also notice that the top of the flower stays flat as it makes its way towards the nozzle, the same way water does. It is not the same behavior that you might find in an hourglass, for example, where you end up with this conical hole at the top where the sand falls down the slopes as it falls out of the bottom. 
So that's it for this experiment. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.